guys, Tony Pellegrino here with Gen Right Off-Road and this little segment is going to be about uh, coilover shocks. So whether it's a Fox, a King, a Swayaway, whatever brand you've got, a lot of these things are going to apply to kind of break down what it is about a coilover shock that you need to understand. At the top of the shocks, there's what the, is called a preload nut. So once you have the springs put on, like you do on this shock, um, you preload both of the springs, and what that does is it helps to set the ride height of the vehicle. When it comes to springs, this, the, the heavier spring should be on the bottom, and then the lighter spring should be on the top, and there shouldn't be more than a 100 pound spring rate difference between the two springs. Next, in terms of terminology on the shock, these are called secondary nuts. Those hit this plastic slider, and this is what actually creates the dual rate. So what happens is, is as the shock compresses, the upper spring is gonna compress more easily first, and it's gonna hit these secondary nuts. Then it's all the second spring. So, so you go from a spring rate that's dividing these two springs straight into, in this case, it's a 200 pound spring, um, and you get a true 200 pound spring rate, which will make the vehicle feel a lot more stable. The, the trick is, is that if you have too much preload or you don't have these secondary nuts adjusted in the right spot, what'll happen is the coil spring will compress all the way till all these coils actually hit what that's called coil bind, and it'll shatter this piece. We get questions all the time, how much nitrogen should be in the shocks? So it's supposed to be 150 pounds at full extension. And uh, when you charge the shock with nitrogen, that's gonna lift the vehicle half to one inch in height. So you really wanna make sure that the nitrogen is charged before you go through all the effort to set your preload nut and get your ride height correct. So a zero preload situation would be where the nut is all the way up and the springs are just slightly loose. So you, so you haven't pre-compressed the springs at all. Okay, now you never wanna roll this nut down more than three inches. So if that's down three inches at ride height, this is all at ride height, then what happens is, is you need to go up 50 pounds on either spring and that'll move this up exactly one inch. Okay, so then, then you've got a two inch preload, which is much more acceptable. And I actually prefer a one inch preload. Um, that, that means you're getting closer to having the spring rate right for the weight of your vehicle. Once the ride height is correct, then I want you to spin the secondary nuts down one inch or three quarters of an inch away from the plastic slider at ride height. So what that means is, as soon as it starts to move, it's gonna occasionally kick in that second spring rate. Now, part of the reason we wanna do that is, a coilover shock is speed sensitive. So the faster it's trying to push out, the more the valving's gonna work. So this is all part of how we set these shocks up with our valving from the manufacturer for a Jeep.